Well, hello and welcome. Those of you that know me are aware that I love every aspect of aviation and seek to be really knowledgeable and proficient on everything associated with all operations, whether it be on the ground or in the air. In the air, that translates to all things associated with aviate, navigate, and communicate. Now, when TAA became a thing, and TAA meaning technically advanced aircraft, I went all in, learning everything technology could do for me with regards to increasing my skills and the utility and enjoyment of flying, and of course, reducing any risk along the way. As time has gone on, I've learned nuances, new functionality, I've established tips and tricks that I think are pretty cool, and many of my pilot buddies have been interested to join me in the journey. It's really gratifying to help pilots learn to do more than direct to on a GPS or using VNAV on the autopilot or do more than just select between COM1 and COM2 on the audio panel. And with so much focus on aviating and navigating, the audio panel seems to get pushed down the priority list. So today, let's talk a little bit about this extremely important piece of technology that's literally at our fingertips. When I got back into flying some 18 years ago, I flew a lot of planes with the Garmin 340 audio panel. I loved using some of the lesser obvious features, including split COM, which allowed the pilot and co-pilot to talk on COM1 and COM2 respectively, and at the same time. Or something small like learning that when you pull out the co-pilot intercom volume control, now you could control the back seat volume with that same knob or sometimes even less valuable features like the PA function. A few years ago, when I upgraded my airplane to using the Garmin 350C, my world changed. I had to learn new buttonology to do the same old things, but I also found new functionality that was really, really cool. So at the risk of boring you, I thought I'd spend a few minutes going over the good old reliable audio panel, in this case, the Garmin 350C. And by the way, the C designation means it has Bluetooth. The straight 350 does not. So let's go flying. Correct. Tank, I'm good if you're good. I'm good. All right. Break us off. Executive Tower, Cirrus 9 or 7, 3 C or Delta, holding short of 3 4, Lima 5, ready to go VFR Northwest. Cirrus 9 or 7, 3 C or Delta, Delta Tower, left to the Northwest, approved, runway 3 4, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, 3 4, left turn to the Northwest, 3 C or Delta. Okay, landing light coming on, Tito heat coming on. Range out in that, runway is clear, final is clear. I'm cleared for takeoff, left turn to the northwest. And hopefully we don't hear a whistle. Again, I'm gonna continue if it is. Okay. Sounds good. Oil pressure a little high, but that's because of the first flight of the day. Ninety knots flaps up, yaw damper on. So in today's conversation about the audio panel, I'm going to try and be concise, which also means I'm not going to talk about complete operation of the panel. Rather, my goal is to talk about some of the lesser known or used functions. As with previous models, it's good to know that if the audio panel fails or if power is lost to the panel, there is a fail-safe circuit that provides a connection between the pilot's headset and your COM1 radio. So while everything seems lost, the pilot can still talk on frequency on COM1. Now the panel today looks similar to previous Garmin models with the COM buttons on the top and the mic buttons on the bottom. As you'd expect, the illuminated mic button tells you which radio you're talking on, and the comm button tells you what radio you're listening to. Not surprisingly, when you press a mic button, the associated comm button lights up as well. Other than listening to a VOR, which would be a nav source, it makes no sense to talk on one radio and listen on a different radio. But it does make sense that you might want to listen to a radio that you're not transmitting to. That function is called monitoring. So you press mic one or mic two to talk and listen on a specific radio, and you can press com one or two to monitor or listen to an additional radio. But that creates a couple possible issues. One, if you're receiving two audio signals coming into the headset at the same time, it may be tough to hear and understand both. Although I gotta admit, pilots are pretty good at that. 
Well, the 350 helps with that in one regard by providing 3D sound. This is a feature that separates the incoming audio to provide COM1 audio to your left ear and COM2 audio to the right ear. And by the way, any passenger audio coming in from the back seat comes to the back of your headset. It's a really cool feature. Now, if 3D sound isn't working for you, it may be because you have a mono headset or you have your stereo headset set for mono. Check the user guide or leave me a message if you have any questions. In the case of the 350, Garmin offers a second solution to the problem, which is to allow you to configure the panel to automatically mute any monitored audio source when there is audio coming in on the active radio. I'll show you how to do that shortly. By the way, if you want to do that split comm thing I talked about before, you can select two active mics by simultaneously selecting both mic 1 and mic 2. That results in the split comm feature, which has the pilot talking and listening on comm 1, while the co-pilot will be talking and listening on comm 2. I've always loved that feature. It really makes for an efficient and effective cockpit. So let's quickly finish up on the layout of the 350C. Think of it on the top row of the audio panel as the sources of audio and the bottom row as the distribution or targets of the audio. So how do we configure the options like the ability to mute audio that interferes with the active radio? Well, in most cases, it's nothing more than holding down a button to enable or disable a feature. For example, if I hold down the COM1 or COM2 button, it will enable or disable monitored muting. Monitor mute enable. Monitor mute disable. That allows you to stay focused on critical radio communications. However, each passenger may have a different need on that, so whether the audio source is muted or not may be dependent on the seat that you're in for the airplane you're in. Well, guess what? The 350 allows you to configure that as well. So let's get into it. To enable monitor muting, merely monitor press and hold the COM1 enable. and or COM2 button. Now think about monitor the layout a little bit disable. more. As far as the audio sources, note that there are three non-radio sources. One is the entertainment source, which can be wired through the front jack, or actually there's a rear jack on that audio panel. Music 2 can also be wired, and the jack is found inside the center console at the back by the convenience outlet, and that's for the front seat passengers. Music 3 can be wired through the jack on the back of the center console for the rear seat passengers. Now, all of these sources can be sourced via Bluetooth, remembering there is only one allowed Bluetooth source at a given time. To make a source Bluetooth, press uh, the source button until the indicator turns blue, and then go over to the far right side and press and hold that right knob until you hear Bluetooth discoverable. Bluetooth discoverable. Now that remains discoverable for 90 seconds. Once one source is active as Bluetooth, the remaining sources will either be selectable as wired, the white indicator, or they'll be off. And maybe not as intuitive as Garmin would like, to distribute any of your audio sources to either that of the pilot, co-pilot, and or passenger combinations, you need to select blue select mode, which you do by giving a quick press on the inner volume knob, followed by a press of the audio source you want to distribute, and then selecting or deselecting any of the three destinations, pilot, co-pilot, or passenger. Now you're ready to set up muting by pressing and holding each audio source button. Easy as pie. Music 2, mute, disable. Music 2, mute, enable. Music 1, mute, disable. Music 1, mute, enable. Bluetooth mute, disabled. Bluetooth mute, enabled. The other configurations available to you are to hold the pilot button down, which will enable or disable the 3D sound. Standard audio. 3D audio left. 3D audio right. Press and hold the co-pilot button to either treat the right seat passenger as a member of the crew or to be treated like a passenger for any muting or other configurations. Co-pilot as passenger. Co-pilot as crew. And finally, pressing and holding the passenger button will enable or disable muting for them. Passenger mute, enable. Passenger mute, disable. The last two items I want to cover starts with setting intercom volumes for music or cockpit conversation. 
Remember, ATC volume is handled by the actual radio volume control elsewhere in the panel. So using the audio panel to set the volume, again, over on the right, use the big knob to select any of the sources or targets by rotating that, that big knob either clockwise or counterclockwise. And then it will have a flashing light on the currently selected item. And then you use the inner knob to set the volume. And there's a light bar there to give you a sense whether you're at low or high volumes. And lastly is the marker beacon. When lit, as you pass over an outer, middle, or inner marker, you're going to see the flashing light and hear the tones. If you press the marker mute button at that time, it will mute the rest of that tone until your next one is received. Now, if you don't want to have any sound come on, you would actually press the marker mute button until the white indicator light goes out. Then no audio will be played. The last feature I quickly wanted to mention was the play button. The play button's great because every time you press it, it goes back in time to replay an ATC communication. Every time you press it, it goes back one further. So you can really pick up clearances, you can pick up communication, make sure something's for you. There's a lot of value there. So that's it. You probably didn't expect to hear so much about this simple device, and I didn't even cover everything. But I hope you found it helpful and will practice using the options. Your passengers are going to appreciate the newfound control you have over their listening experience, and you're going to build confidence to configure the panel in a safe and a productive way for an enjoyable and successful trip. If you have any questions, let me know. Until the next time, blue skies and tailwinds.